What's going on, Summy? Where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm here to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips and tricks to make you the best Fortnite player you could possibly be. Today, we're going to be talking about cash cups. Yes, guys, show us the big money. These are tournaments that have real cash prizes that you can win, but only if you manage to make it far enough on the leaderboard. So today, we're going to be showing you how to improve your skills and what to watch out for if you want to take home some of that sweet prize money. But before we do, you already know what time it is. It's time to get my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that butcher crunch. Woo! And let's get this going. All right, so have you ever played basketball in gym? Like, what about, like, simply run a few laps? Before you even think about doing that, though, don't you have to, like, warm up or perform a few exercise routines, like stretching or, you know, jumping jacks? Like, the same rule applies to esports. However, you are going to be training your hands and mind. All right, guys, if you want to be a pro, you have to think like them, right? And that means running a few courses before stepping into the cash cup. Take this as an example, all right? Like, if you just woke up, you know, you're getting ready for a cash cup, what might happen is that you enter the match and your muscle memory is still waking up. And so because of this, you aren't at your 100% skill level. Reflexes and muscle memory needs to be stimulated before they're just running at their peak performance. This is why you start to feel like you're playing better after spending time grinding Fortnite. Your mind is just easing into it, man. And you know, this is what we gamers call being in the zone. Like just remember to just warm up moderately or and not really overdo it, all right? Like if you spend the whole day playing Fortnite before the big game, you might get burned out and not really do as well as you could do. So warm-ups are only warm-ups for a reason. All right, so if you need help warming up or just learning any more advanced skills. All right, you guys got to click on the link below to visit proguys.com. There, you can get connected to a variety of different coaches that can help you tap into your full potential. Whether you're coming in as a beginner or already have some experience playing competitive, there is always something new to learn. All right, so you've probably heard this countless times before. Are you VOD reviewing? Yes, we say it a lot on this channel because it's helped so much. It is so important, man. Don't forget to VOD review. You need to VOD review, right? I'm telling you right now, like, we're going to say it again and again, but this time, we really mean it. Why? Because this isn't just a normal game of Fortnite. No, we're talking about money. We're talking about cash cups. VOD reviews are useful for just helping you understand what you did wrong and, you know, what you did right during a match. However, the extent of their help will depend on what kind of game you're reviewing. So if you review a casual match of Fortnite, then you're going to get a mix of some good information and things you probably already know about. So the more experienced your opponents are, the more you're going to get out of the VOD review since you're going to be exposed to new tactics and quicker opponents. And so the cash cup is where you're going to need to VOD review like your life depends on it. So the best way to prepare to really do better at cash cups is to study what new challenges are causing you trouble during these high state games. Like you're going to have plenty of study as you proceed with more and more cash cups as time goes by. Pay close close attention to your opponents, all right? Like the bills to you and your reaction time. This is also gonna help you get the most out of playing tournaments. Eliminations are valuable during a cash cup. If all you do is play for placement, then you're unlikely to see the top 100 at all. So what many pros try to do when multiple rounds are, are happening um, is to really start W King during the first round to get as many points as possible before taking a more backsy style of playing during other rounds. This is gonna allow you to rack up points, which you're gonna need if you intend to move on to the next round. So after your W key round, you wanna start playing for the late game. This means taking a bit easier, you know, just staying out of too much trouble and, you know, just kind of beefing up your loadout so you can just start going up against the late game players who have made it this far. This way, like, you can get good placement points and then top it off with whatever players you eliminate during the final battle. However, be warned though, like, you might not even make it to the second half of the cash cup if you don't place in the top 100. So, keep in mind how many points that you're getting and just try to improve your fighting skills. Also, keep training, you know, that early game strategy since this is where opponents are really at their weakest and if you're a good player with fantastic aim, this is going to be the moment where you're going to make most of your kills really in the first place. All right, so your choice of drop spot is another topic that has different dimensions to it when you apply them to tournaments. All right, so for starters, a landing spot might be great if you want to start the game in a good place and get the victory out. However, like we mentioned before, guys, like when we talked about kills, cash cups, don't just look at whether or not you're the last one standing. You need to score high by getting placements and kills. So if you're doing a solo cash cup, you want to be able to drop somewhere you can just get the action right away, but leave with a decent loadout. If you land too secluded, you could end up missing viable kills that can just 
bonuses help you place higher during the event. This can be critical for anybody wanting to succeed. And so if you're playing team modes, you could take the liberty of just landing somewhere a little more populated. Plus, solo drops, while great for one player, might not have sufficient loot to fully equip a team of two or three players. So for this, you need to land in places where you know you can get more loot. And if that means fighting another team, well, so be it. All right, so once again, man, you know, we always have to remind you to always have at least two possible landing spots in mind before the match starts. Ultimately, three possible landing spots, depending on the bus driver's trajectory. This is not like a decision you want to be making while on the bus. The player that comes in prepared has the best advantage against players who come up with everything at the last minute. All right, so during a tournament such as the Cash Cup, your mindset is more important than ever. You might have mastered staying cool during arena. Great. In fact, like you might have reached the Champions League. However, the Cash Cups, <laughs> yo, it's a whole different beast with actual prize money on the line. Let's talk about your expectations because even going in confident can lead to unrealistic expectations that will hinder you in the long run if you aren't careful. Like if you become a creative king, that's dope. But if you've maxed out your rank in arena, that's even better. However, after these accomplishments, it can be easy to just slip into the mindset that you can definitely get some cash during a cash cup. After all, like if you're this good at the game, what's really stopping you? Well, the truth is that there are countless players trying to make it big in Fortnite, and many of them are already doing what you're doing. Once you step into the cash cup, I mean, you're gonna be playing against others that are just as dedicated as you or even more. In reality, man, like you probably won't do as well as you think during your first cash cup, and that's perfectly fine. The problem is, is when you set expectations too high and it can hit you much harder so in some cases it would even start just being frustrating when you realize you aren't getting the scores that you thought you would fortnite is all about self-improvement guys you know you got to take it day by day take it step by step and that's how you stay encouraged to get to where the pros are so all you got to do man is just keep preparing yourself to try to improve yourself all right try to get small goals for yourself such as lasting longer getting more kills and achieving a specific number of points during a match and eventually, when you put all these together, you should start seeing your placement improve. All right, man, with practice, I'm telling you right now, you might even be able to get to the top 100 as long as you don't lose sight of your goal. All right, before we wrap things up for today, don't forget to visit ProGuys.com. Get connected with our pro coaches and get trained to become the best Fortnite player you could possibly be. All right, so now for one last piece of advice that's gonna help you win big at a cash cup. Playing in late game can be very different from playing in the early and mid game, right? Here, and I mean like right here, you're gonna need to keep moving and keep tarping skills up today because this only occurs during the late game past the final storm circle. You can't really rely on battle royale matches to train for it, right? After all, it isn't even guaranteed that you can even make it to that point each match. And what you need to train is your building, your movement and combat. And this is why guys, you wanna play other games game mode, specifically Zone Wars. Zone Wars is a popular mode that takes you right to the finale of the Fortnite match. And so these smaller scale battles don't really take place on the main Fortnite island. However, that's okay because you still are going to be learning viable lessons without having to reach that point each time. You know, Zone Wars doesn't have all, you know, 100 players. However, this works out because realistically, like when the zone starts moving in a real match, most of the other players have been eliminated by this point and the ones that remain are the ones that are going to put up a fight. This mode will put your building techniques to good use, I'm telling you. Whether or not you know you do good here will also be determined by your ability to edit. Don't forget to also train your 1v1s, all right? While zone wars are more tailored for the competitive experience, you won't get anywhere in that mode unless you first train how to fight so that you can reach that point in the game. You also wanna make sure that you know when you do encounter one of these late game opponents that you can eliminate them with a certain distance to yourself. Those refresh items are gonna be crucial to keep you moving. But you guys tell me where you at your motivation guy is back. That's going to wrap things up for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it, man. I really, really do. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word. We got so much amazing content coming out. Remember, even if your journey towards becoming a pro seems longer than you expected, keep practicing, guys. Come on. Keep improving. Keep grinding. Keep the dreams high. I'm telling you, because you have to. You got to stay positive, and you got to stay believing in yourself that you can do it. No matter what mess ups that you experience, no matter how many mistakes you make, no matter how many times you keep failing, you got to keep getting back up and keep trying harder than ever. I'll see you guys in the next one. Connect to me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Peace.